I like your T-shirt. Thanks, man. You can get one yourself very soon. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So whereabouts in the world are you today? I'm in Marin County, north of San Francisco, about an hour north of San Francisco. Okay, just at home? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tom, the, the first album I ever bought with my own money was Listen to the Music, the Doobie Brothers' Greatest Hits in 74. What was, do you remember the first album you ever bought? Oh, God. Uh, I actually had a bunch that I got from my brother when I was a kid. I didn't buy any for a while. Uh, the first one I actually purchased. Oh, man. That's tough. <laughs> That's really hard to do. Uh, I got into a record buying frenzy by the time I got into my teen years. But, um, man, I don't recall. Yeah. Was there one that you played the hell out of? It might have been, been Albert King. Yeah. Was there one that you played the hell out of? Yep. Born under a bad sign. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, do you remember the first time you heard a Doobie Brothers song on the radio? Yeah, I did. 1972. I was in my Volkswagen driving back to San Jose from, I don't know where I was driving from, probably Cupertino or something. And uh, it came on the radio. And I almost got in a wreck. I said, oh my God, it's like, <laughs> so I pulled over and listened. Yeah. Pretty uh, and, and now you're on your 50th anniversary tour. Um, what would have you been doing if the, the band thing didn't work out? Did you have a fallback occupation? I've been very fortunate in that I didn't have to find out. I mean, I left the band for roughly 10 years. I left in 77 and came back in 87. And I did two solo albums in that period of time, and they were fairly successful. So, I mean, I could have kept doing that, but, um, you know, it's, it's nice being back with the band. I enjoy being around these guys. Yeah. I have a good time with it. Uh, you're coming back to Australia for Blues Fest in Byron Bay, some gigs in Sydney and Blues Fest Melbourne for the first time. Uh, that is correct. When you think of Blues Fest, what comes to mind? Well... We played one in uh, Fremantle too, for that matter. And I think it was all part, I think the same guy throws them all. Is that correct? Uh, I'm the sorry. Same, same promoter throws all those. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, Peter Noble. There's one in Perth as well. Right. That's the guy. Yeah. Um, I've been impressed with every place I've played like that. I mean, the one in Byron Bay, which I assume is the granddaddy of them all, is um, probably the best run show any place that i've ever been at it's just not that the other ones aren't well run but that one's like clockwork it's bang 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 and the crowds are phenomenal the crowds are always great really responsive having a ball and then you get to stay at that really cool little hotel there on the beach and uh nice restaurants there. there's not too much to not like about it it's neat yeah, I, I spoke to you and Pat, uh, I don't know how many years ago now, but you told me that uh, once uh, you got hit by a car because you were looking the wrong way. Ah, God. You got Newcastle, that was in Newcastle. I know where that was. It was you? my fault. I did it. I was trying to rescue a phone and I didn't think about the opposite thing enough. And so I, you know, I, I let the guy said, I'm going to grab my phone. And he was coming you know, on the opposite side of the street from what we're used to over here anyway. And I started to make a run for it. And then, he, and then I stopped and he said, no, go ahead. And I said, then we got confused. And the next thing I said, oh, hell with it, I'll go. And then he went. And I said, <laughs> uh, So you're coming over with, with Pat and John and Michael this time. Uh, who else is in the band this time around? Uh, last time we were down there, I want to say it was 17, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's right. Um, so we've got John Callan on bass and vocals, killer singer, great bass player, been with us for quite a while. Um, we have uh, Mark Russo on sax, who's been with us for almost 30 years, not quite, but almost. Um, we've got Ed Toth on drums, who's been with us for quite a while. He took Keith's place. Um, and we have uh, Mark Quignone's playing percussion who we got from the Allman Brothers and Greg Allman. And I think that rounds it out. That's pretty much it. Plus, you know, aside from the guys that you already mentioned, I mean. Yeah. Um, having Michael McDonald uh, back in the band, what what does that mean to the band? I guess you're playing songs that normally you wouldn't? Well, yeah. I mean, essentially, Michael has toured with us once before, at least in this generation, or what do you want, iteration of the Doobie Brothers. In 95, we did a tour with him. Uh, this one, 
a little more extensive as far as his material goes. And I got to tell you, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying this. Uh, we've been doing this for at least a year and a half anyway in the States. We've played a lot of shows. And uh, the crowd love it. And I mean, it's great having all the songs. And Michael gives a huge response. And um, his songs generally get a huge response. And, you know, it's, it's a great thing because you got the very first song we ever put out. It starts the show. And the last song you do is, well, Listen, I can't tell you that because I'll give away the show. Um, but you get all of Michael's hits and you get all the hits that the band did. And then you get deep cuts that are in there that weren't hits, but they're just great songs. And that flushes out the rest of the set. Yeah. Over two hours. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, does the band have any pre-show rituals that you go through before going on stage? Uh, you know, noodling around on your guitar, maybe doing a vocal warm up. Uh, everybody kind of does that individually, and uh, but nothing special. There's no pep talk or anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys have got a, a new album, uh, which you put out, I think, the end of 2021, Liberté. Correct. Uh, and we're going to be playing a couple of songs off that as well, I should yeah. mention. So once you decided you are going to do uh, an album of new material, um, how long did it take to come together? Well, because it got interrupted with COVID, we started in 2019, um, and then it got lopped off for a year and a half, I guess, and uh, we had gotten, I want to say, maybe five songs done at that point, and then we had, not a full two years, but a year and a half of sitting around, you know, and that's when we made all those Zoom videos or whatever you want to call them uh, that we put out on the internet, but we went back to it and finished it up in 21, 20. Yeah, 21. And it got released. And as I said, we've been playing actually three of them in the show. And um, those have actually switched around, changed around. We've played different songs at different times. Uh, but the album was very different in that we co-wrote the whole album with the producer, who's also a fabulous guitar player and, and uh, works with a lot of people. But he, um, you know, it's like a different way of doing it. You'd go in the door, you go to the writing room, you sit down with him. It was like one-on-one. -on -one. I, I did all my songs with him uh, and, you know, wrote them with him. And Pat did all his songs with him and wrote them. And we would do the bare bones of it, if you will, right there in that room, getting it, uh, what should I say, mapped out. And then he would send that down to the studio right below him. And then we'd go down and start recording the song for real. And usually by the end of two days, you had a new song. It was very rapid. I've never done it that way before. Yeah. Uh, the album opens with the track Oh Mexico, which is a great upbeat number. Is the track order important to you guys still these days? It's, they asked us about it. We went through a whole thing with that. I guess we do that on every album. I never think about it until we're doing it again. But um, yeah, uh, John had a part in that as well. Uh, Shanks, the producer, and also played on every song and everything. But yeah, he, he and the record company really kind of, you know, laid the songs out the way they thought they'd be best. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite tracks on the album is uh, The American Dream. Uh, what's the inspiration behind that song? Um, it's kind of a, I'll say, retro look at growing up in America, what it was like when you were a teenager and, and later in the wild years, if you will, and um, in your 20s, 30s. And just kind of what it was like. It's a little bit idyllic, but it's it's um, some of it's kind of accurate, and, uh, and a lot of it's kind of accurate. And it's, it's it's basically about that, you know, what it was like to grow up in that period of time, and, and the fun you had doing it, and uh, hanging around with some wonderful chick, man, it was just marvelous. Yeah, uh, the track "Amen, Old Friend," I, I guess, is about regrets or not having regret regrets looking forward to the future, living in the now, um, quite pertinent at the moment with, with the loss of John Hartman last year and uh, yeah, yeah. Beck and David Crosby, Christine. <laughs> There's been a lot of people lately. Uh, it's just time marches on and then that happens. So um, that's kind of what it is. It's like a, a view of tiny ways that are could have spent more wisely and um wishing you hadn't done some of the things you've done and, and said some of the things you said, maybe. And just singing about it. Yeah. 
Uh, we mentioned John Hartman, uh, your longtime drummer that we lost last year. Um, your band has always had a, a great family vibe. You always look after your fellow members. Um, it's a real family situation. Is that something you learned from watching other bands earlier in the days, or is it just an inherent thing in the band? I think it's just happened. It's everything in this band is never planned. I mean, nothing, I should say, is in this, nothing's ever planned. I mean, other than you're going to do some recording. That's about as definitive as that gets. And then uh, we're going to play some shows. Well, okay, we're going to do that. Everything else just happens spontaneously. So, um, you know, I, the band started, when the band started, I was already playing with John in another band. He'd come out from uh, Virginia uh, to meet Skip Spence and anybody from Moby Grape at that time. That was like 1969, I guess. Ouch. Anyway, <clears throat> he had come out and I was hanging around with Skip Spence because he lived right around the corner. And we got together and we we all played together and he brought out a bass player with him and we got a band with that. And then we played in Cupertino one night at a place called the Gaslight Theater. And it's just a club, really. And Pat was playing there and we'd never seen him play before. And that was neat because he, he was really a good finger picker and he was a good singer. And that was kind of the basis of what took off to be the Doobie Brothers. That and added another bass player or a bass player. Yeah. Is there a song on Liberté that uh, is closer to your heart than others? That's my heart. Um, well, I like the one you mentioned. I like American Dream. I also like the other one you mentioned, Oh Mexico. Um, I like Shine Down On, Shine Down On Me. Uh, I think that's a, a great tune. Uh, Better Days is a great song. Um, it's... It's kind of a project that was really intensely done in a short period of time. So once we finish with it, I kind of don't think about it a great deal, except when I'm playing it live. Uh, but I like all the songs that we talked about a lot. I was very happy with those songs. Yeah, I, I guess it's nice to have some new material to take on the road because you're obligated to play so many hits. It is. You know, it's just also nice. to. It gives you, what should I say? cred street cred because you're still making music you know you're not just out there you know beating the old ones to death but you know, i'll tell you what the old ones that's what in playing those every night everybody always asks you do you get sick of playing those songs well no you don't i'll tell you why because the crowd responds so incredibly both singing dancing they know all the words so every night you play it it's kind of like playing a new song yeah. And then playing new music, you know, then you've got to, the people have been really good about accepting it. And some of them they're even enthusiastic about, uh, but the ones that they're all familiar and there to hear, you got to play them. Yeah. Um, you take a bunch of PRS guitars on the road. You've been playing them for, for decades. Do you ever get tempted to try something else or is it a case of not fixing what ain't broke? I played Gibson for years and I, you know, I played, uh, I played a strap for a while I played a lot of different guitars, to be honest with you, a lot of different brands. Uh, I ran into PRS in 1985, I think, 86. I was going on a, a, a Department of Defense tour, a USO tour, and um, I bought my first one. And I took it on that tour, and I was really impressed with it because it was not your regular tour. It was pretty rough sledding if you are going from big aircraft carriers to um marine bases to whatever you know all over the world and so it really got a road beating and it it held up really well it was a great guitar and so i just stayed with them they play great they sound great and paul has been really good about backing them already yeah do you still have many guitars would you consider yourself a, a collector i used to do that and i had a ton of guitars and uh, i dragged them around because they moved a lot and i would god bring them to this house over to this house over to that house and after a while i said you're not playing any of these what's the point of having them so i got rid of most of them I, I still have probably 25 guitars here but um compared to what i used to have that's not a lot yeah uh, what, what's the guitar that you reach for at home when you get a song idea probably an acoustic just to get the chords going and stuff occasionally I, i'll do it on uh electric but um most of the time, just to get the chord changes, they do it on a Martin acoustic that I have. Yeah. So what are you looking forward to most about coming back to Australia? Do you have a, a favorite Australian food or place to eat or a city you enjoy visiting? 
Uh, I like every place in Australia. It's a great country. Um, like I said, we haven't been there for, I can't believe it's that long. It, I guess it's 2017. The last time we were there, we played the Blues Fest. And um, we've played there three times since 2005. We played, oh no, we played there in 95 too. That's why we're on that tour with Foreigner. We played there. And then we played 2005. I'm not sure about the one in between. And then 2017. But it was there. I just don't remember what year it was. I I, I love Australia. I think it's a beautiful country. I really enjoy being down there. Yeah. The food, the people are great. You know, neat cities. So what are you most proud of in your music career? That's a good question. Um, I think that we're still doing it. Uh, but, you know, we love doing it. It's fun. So it's not like anybody's got, you know, holding a gun to our head or anything. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that we've been able to have an effect on people's lives that's been positive. And I've had people come up and tell me that. So I know that to be a fact. That's that's great. That's a good thing. You know, you help people through some troubled spots in their lives, even though you didn't know you were going to, um, just with your, excuse me, with your music. And... Um, so that's a good thing. I think, you know, anything you can do to bring up the human spirit, I think that's a positive. Make people think. Yeah. Well, Tom, it's been a great catch up and we look forward to seeing you uh, very soon at Blues Fest and uh, Blues Fest uh, Sideshows. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to be down there in not too long. Right. Look forward to it. All right. Thanks, man. We'll catch you next All time. Right. Take care.